and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up, rise up, rise up. Good evening, everybody, and welcome once again to the Midnight Ride. My name is David Carrico, and it's my great honor to welcome each and every one of you into the Puritan Barn, into the Now You See TV studios once again for the Midnight Ride. Tonight, the Prince of the Power of the Air, the Mystery Archon, a very timely message that is coming at just the right time. This is going to be a right now word, I guarantee you. So get ready. It all starts right now because we are now live, live, live. What's up, guys? It's so good to be here once again, like David said, in the Puritan barn. And we are excited to be here with you. And I just want to give a shout out to all of you that listen weekly. We see you guys in the chat, see you guys in the comments. Man, it's a blessing to have you back. And for those of you that are new to this channel, Check it out, and if you do so like this, by the time you finish watching this video, hit the subscribe button. And before we get started, we want to give a shout out to all of our sponsors tonight. Watts Leather, uh, the best custom leather design artist, manufacturer, whatever you want to call him, uh, that I, I have come by, one of the best anyway, and he is he's awesome. I know there's a lot of good people out there too that listen to the show that do this uh, crap, but he's been doing it for us for a long time helped a lot of you guys made some pretty amazing works you got to go check out his website because it'll it'll definitely have your head thinking about what can i do to put some of this stuff into my life it's really really cool also want to give a, sh a shout out to sugar and spice soap for natural soaps if you're like me you do not want to rub toxic chemicals on your body you don't trust a ton of people that make soap so i trust handmade soaps i trust handmade soaps by believers who want to make things that are good for the body, good for their children, good for their family. So make sure you guys check out that. They have a Midnight Ride soap just for you guys. They have a coupon code NYSTV that will get you 10% off any order. Um, also, check out the websites that me and David have, nystv.org, which has exclusive content you will not find anywhere else, uh, documentaries, our Book of Enoch video commentary, uh, shows that have been too hot for the the regular means that we normally use you guys can check all that stuff out coupon code rider r-i-d-e-r will get you eight dollars and 99 cent off your first month also fojc radio this is a 40 years compilation or more of david and donna's ministry work we have videos for that they've been doing for years and years and years uh books uh resources so many different things to check out and that is concludes our sponsor section david do you got anything you want to add tonight well, for those that Sunday would go to FOJCRadio.com and at 8 p.m. Central, hit our Rumble channel. We'll be live streaming on Rumble, the Redneck History Channel. And you're just going to have to see that to believe it. It's going to be an awesome show with a, a special guest that's going to bless you. So that'll be there for you if you like. Very cool. And I think at 6 o'clock, right before that, You'll have the uh, Breaking Babylon. Is that right, John? Yeah, Breaking Babylon. Broadcast for, tomorrow night. Yeah, over on Breaking Babylon YouTube channel, and we're excited for that. It's always some of you guys listen to that stuff. Some of you don't, but if you enjoy listening to things that are more kind of focused on um, really just kind of gaining wisdom and being able to navigate through the world in a way that um, the Bible tells us to keep us safe, to keep us blessed, and to keep us from harm so this is this is the whole point of breaking babylon channel so if you're into that kind of thing this is more for people who are following the word and they want to and they want to do what's right and they want to be able to examine things and learn from people who have made mistakes and who have also 
uh, done things that are great. So that's the whole point of that show. But enough plugging about that. What do you think, David? I think, think we plugged enough. Let's let's shuck the corn. Let's shuck the corn. So um, tonight we're going to be talking about a subject that is really timely, like David said. It's super timely because now we can kind of really understand and grasp this mystery that is being laid before us. And I think this is a mystery that people of ancient times actually understood as well. So I believe that every significant event that has happened and will happen is put into these holy scriptures that we call the Bible. I believe that by reading through the scriptures, you can find things that you would be surprised are there. And this is a compilation of books, 66 books that have been written by many authors over thousands of years and compiled together to all make sense together to tell a narrative that from the beginning all the way to the end. And these past few years, many scrolls, many mysteries have been opened because of the things that we've seen, the technologies that have increased, and the mysteries have become something that's right in our face. And so we have to talk about it because we do have to understand why is this all happening. And, you know, with great light reaching the world, which I believe that, you know, channels like ours that go out there and they, they tell people the best that they can about the truth, people that are out there every day making the right decisions, doing the right things for people, telling people the truth about the gospel and about all of the things that really matter in this world, uh, have shined light on some really dark places. Along with, along with them and along with technology, light has opened our eyes to seeing what things are going on. Now, those of us that are not spiritually blind see these things, and it really does grip our hearts to see what is happening and to, and to try to understand why other people don't see them is really hard to understand and now that it's really just kind of in front of everyone's faces they can see it it's happening right there i have to wonder how come they don't see it how come the all of these people don't see what is going on right in front of our face we see the degradation of entire societies the education systems failing we see uh, perverted means being taught to our children we see all of these horrific acts of stupidity done by those who are supposed to be our leaders and we see the destruction coming so quickly and it's because it's not a problem with the exposure because the exposure has happened it's been exposed five million times over we've exposed it people before us have exposed it and people will continue to expose what's going on it's not an exposation problem it is a spiritual blindness problem that has gripped the entire world. Um, in Ephesians chapter 2, we have a very esoteric passage. And when I say esoteric, I mean in the in what the definition of esoteric means is that very few people will be able to understand this. And it's not because of any other reason than most people are completely unwilling to look at the Scripture take it for what it exactly says and take it very literal and seriously now when i say that there's a hidden meaning in the scripture it's only hidden to people that don't want to actually look at the scripture and actually see what it says and so we're going to uncover this mystery that's literally right in front of our face some of you may have never thought of this some of you this may have been something on your mind and this is something, though, that we really need to understand how it works because it seems sometimes like a myth or, oh, yeah, you know, these things are happening and we need to be careful. But when you really think, see it for what it is, it really puts a more serious yoke on your burden to be able to help your children understand, help others around you understand, and to be able to walk through and navigate this world. So this first uh, verse that I'm going to read to you guys here, let me pull up the PowerPoint. Is Ephesians 2 verse 2 and it says we're in in time past you walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience so let's break this down so the Greek word for prince here is actually archon and archon means ruler magistrate 
someone who is in charge. Uh, often in Gnosticism, you see the Archon being um, part of the Demiurges who created things and are here to stifle everybody who's trapped inside of here. Well, the Archons are, are really just rulers. They're rulers, and this is a spiritual ruler, as we see when we break down this verse here. And the Greek word for power is exousia, which means authority and power to act. And we know that this is a spirit that works in the children of disobedience. So we know that this is a spirit. We know that it works through the power of the air. In fact, it commands and controls the power of the air and is able to work in the minds of men. So this is interesting. Now, we've heard all heard of demon possession. We've all heard of spiritual um, attacks, and we've heard of all of these different things. But let's just kind of get down to the nitty-gritty of what we're talking about here. So the Greek word for air is air, and it is uh, air, the lower air we breathe. So within this air, we have these powers that are being controlled by this archon. And so we're going to kind of break down uh, what is in the air. Now, there was this Greek philosopher. I'm going to show you guys a picture here. His name is Anaximenes, and he was a Greek philosopher, and he was probably the first known Western philosopher. And he believed that the air is constantly in motion. It believes, he believed that it had life. He took... Uh, he believed air took on qualities of the divine and became the cause of other gods as well. So he believed that this air, this little air that was roaming around all around us, was alive and it also gave power to other gods. Um, and many scholars believe that Plato, his theories about matter came from Anaximenes. And so, and when we fast forward now, David, to 2023. Um, we know that there are things in the air that we cannot see. We know we have waves in the air, all kinds of waves, sound waves, light waves, radio waves, all of these different kinds of waves in the air. Uh, we know we have magnetism moving all around us. We have so many things going on through the air um, that it's, it's almost mind-blowing to really think about. It. It's almost like those of us who lived in cities and, and around areas that have cell phone coverage and ex, et cetera live in a net of electricity that surrounds all around us traveling through the air. And so those of us who decided to take this verse literally, we're taking this verse literally for what it says, um, we know that within the air is also a power who seeks to control the minds of men, who seeks to work in the children of disobedience for a common goal. We know that this is the case. And they have the power to speak into our minds, cause fear, cause doubt, cause destruction and cause temptations to come our way that are very hard to deal with as human beings. And we all know this. If, we've ever, if you've ever been the children of disobedience, which I know I have in my life, the sins seem to never stop tempting. They're just are all around you. There's everything. You have voices telling you that you're no good. You have things in your heart telling you that you'll never succeed. You'll never make this happen. You are... Or you have the opposite. You have the prideful spirits telling you you're better than everybody else. You don't need God. You don't need all of these different things. So you have all of these different um, ideas being planted inside of your head. Now, that's not to say we can't come up with these ideas ourselves, but we see that um, these entities do have this power to do this. And so um, this is exactly what I believe Paul was talking about when he talks about the archon who works in the children of disobedience. And so the flesh-focused humans seem like they act almost like a receiver to take on these spirits. They're almost, you know, how in radios, we have a radio that we can speak to. It receives a message or on a cell phone, something that receives a message. Well, within the humans of children of disobedience, there is a receiver for this archon who controls the power of the air to be able to seep into their minds. And before I understood this mystery, I was seriously perplexed with how it was possible that all of these humans over thousands of years, over hundreds and thousands of miles from each other, were able to formulate such a plan as to entrap the entirety of mankind right in front of their faces without them even knowing it. If, if I didn't know any better, I would think that they were meeting together every week, talking about a plan or singing out a newsletter, 
and enacting it. You see the waves of how people go from this to that to this to that and just completely change and shift ideologies based on the agenda. And I never understood how this works. Now it totally makes sense to me. Uh, David, did you have anything to add before I move on here? Well, believers are going to have to step up their game. And the text you read in Ephesians, usually as far as that gets unpacked when it's mentioned is, yes, there is a Satan and he controls the disembodied spirits here in the first heaven. And that's good. We need to know that. But like you said, we've got to think in terms of things in the air like electricity, magnetism, 5G, all of this wave technology like harp. And even though these things are created by nuts and bolts human technology, they're created through fallen angel knowledge, and there's an archon superintending this whole process. Yeah, when you really put it in terms like that, and you really think about it, if you really truly think about it, it is uh, mind-blowing and, and frightening, yeah. really. Yeah. Frightening. Yeah. And... You know, the Bible says this is a spiritual battle. He says this is not a physical battle, and this is totally understandable when you think of it this way, that humans are almost like puppets, puppet suits for these demonic entities, these spiritual entities, to be used for an agenda, to go flow like air flows from one to another, able to be manipulated, able to be used. Um, I mean, the enemy resides in the air. This is a frightening thing. This is something we're going to talk about. Also, we'll talk about what does the scripture say? What is our defense? What can we do about this? So, um, but this mystery that we're talking about here, this thing that Paul is talking about, this is the same, but I believe this is the same thing that we hear people who have made huge contributions to society. We're talking, we're talking discoveries that have changed the world that we live in. For better or for worse, we're talking massive discoveries. We're talking people who have have genius level uh, wisdom that give their glory to a specific purpose or a specific thing. And this thing we're talking about here uh, in the Aryan text of the Vedic, te Vedic text is referred to as the Akashic record, the Akasha. Okay, in uh, Germany, they've referred it to it as the Vril. We've heard it called the luminiferous ether. ether. We've heard um, the seething energies of Lucifer. We've heard all of these different ideas about what this is. So we're going to talk this a little bit about this because this is really important to understand that this has been something sought out for a long time, been used for a long time. And, you know, there's the idea we wonder, is this thing in the air reaching out to us or are we reaching out to it? So... Here is Tesla here. This is what he says about this Akasha and the prana. He says, All perceptible matter comes from a primary substance or tenuity beyond, beyond conception, filling all space, the Akasha or luminiferous ether, which is acted upon by the life-giving prana or creative force, calling into existence in never-ending cycles all things and phenomenon. So Tesla knew about the power that resided in the air. And because I believe of financial interest of more powerful people at the time, his discoveries were put aside, possibly used by intelligence operations and military operations that we aren't allowed to know about, um, and used probably for just the people in power. Because with uh, information like what Tesla had to be used, the regular people to be using it, would be uh, somewhat dangerous, I guess they could thought, and they would lose a lot of money. So therefore, Tesla's ideas were kind of put aside. But yet, we see today that they're being lifted up pretty heavily. And so there was also Oppenheimer. Um, he spoke of this, and Oppenheimer was the inventor of the atomic bomb. And he said that the Vedic texts were the gift to man of the of the century this is the gift to man of the century he carried one around this was a jewish man he carried one around but he gave it to all his friends he had an extra copy he would give out when he exploded the atomic weapon in los alamos on the 33rd parallel he said i have become death the destroyer of worlds now this is a quote straight out of the bhagavad gita which is a part of the vedic text um, there have been mathematicians that were seemingly ignorant 
uh, till they went through the rituals that the text describes in order to receive information from the Akashic record. And he became one of the leading mathematicians that uh, put forth many, many different ideas about math that we still use today. This is a, a never ending cycle of people. And if you want to know more about the people that talked about that, I did, uh, me and David did a, a show, I don't know, it was several years ago, it looks like five years ago. Wow, and it seemed like five years. It doesn't, it's amazing, <laughs> isn't it? So it, it's called The Ancient Watchers, The Mystery, Enchantment, Science. Show, yes. Well. Yeah, and so you can look that up. I don't have the description uh, in the link in the description, mm -hmm. but you can look up that title and find it. But it talks more about that particular subject. But there's a lot of people who have had significant breakthroughs that uh, put their stock in this. And also uh, the real, David, you've done it, actually talked about the real quite a bit. What, if, what about the real makes sense to this? Well, the real is the same concept of what Tesla spoke of as the aether. And that was also spoken of by some. Blavatsky called it the prana. And this is the substance that is filling what we would call the, the third heaven. And the Nazis were all about that. And they claimed there was the Thule Society, which was an occult secret society in league with the British Golden Dawn. And then there was the Viril Society, which was headed up by... Uh, uh, Maria uh, Orsinki, I believe her name is. That's probably pretty close. They were channelers and mystics, and they actually claimed to have channeled the blueprints for the exotic technology that the Nazis had developed, uh, the Hamanube and these Brill flying machines. Yep. And I, I believe that they did. And for, my, for just my opinion, which you can take it for whatever you think it's worth, I think that the people that are really developing this exotic black science technology, if you will, they know Tesla was right. Yeah. And they know they're using his concepts and his techniques to develop this ultra sophisticated technology. And I believe Einstein was a total psyop. I think the purpose of Einstein was to bury the work of Tesla. Einstein totally rejected any electronic component mm. in any of his calculations i think uh, i think it's just uh, nothing but a psyop to bury the the what tesla developed and the people that are really making it happen i think they know that and they're using this tesla technology and they leave their little clues there to yeah. where you can pretty much see a lot of them are just right in your face well, yeah, and a lot of the logos for the companies, for such as the company Tesla, run, could be a clue. Could yeah, the logo is the T. So the logo for the the um, D Wave computer is also a T. It's really interesting. These these little logos that are spanned throughout this stuff. Now something else, just a real quick clue to look for. We after the open defeat of the Nazis, if they ever were, the Nazis had. That was what that was called the Black Fleet or the Ghost Fleet, mm -hmm. like of about 35 submarines, which a lot of people think wound up at their base in Antarctica. And after that time, for their own, uh, to be less detectable, the swastika was replaced with the Black Sun. Mm -hmm. And the Black Sun and a deep red glowing sun is the emblem that we can trace also to see the the remnants of this Nazi technology as it continued to perpetuate itself. And it certainly did in a big way. Yeah. And what people probably don't realize is that our country played a huge part in Germany and funding Germany, the people, powerful people, also the Vatican played a big part in funding the, you know, these technologies were not lost, nor were these ideas shunned until um, the political side came in. So we have to remember that. A lot of people think that with Germany's occult ideas went away, but their scientists, their occult scientists actually all came over here pretty much. And any of them were yeah, keeping anyway. So Yeah, they did. Sure did. So, um, you know, one of the elemental powers, I guess, that we see in the air is, is electricity, too. You know, we have the sound waves, which sound waves are interesting. Sound waves can go at a low frequency, um, can actually cause sickness, anxiety, crazy things that uh, people often find in when they're doing ghost hunting or, or they've encountered a haunting of some sort, these low frequency 
sound, this low frequency sound that goes through that just causes this anxiety. Um, the supernatural connection to electricity and sound waves can't really be looked over. Um, you can detect it. I know that in any situation that I've ever had that has been supernatural, which there have been a few, um, I would be lying to say they haven't. Sometimes I don't like to mention them because people instantly look at you and think, man, this guy's a nut job. But almost every single one that I've ever had, there was a buzzing, almost electricity involved of some sort. You could feel the electricity and you can also feel the anxiety, the low kind of frequencies and stuff that you feel in those type of environments that make you almost sick. You, you could feel those things. And these uh, feelings can also be generated by electromagnetic frequencies. And one of the, I guess, interesting phenomenon is, you know, how the ghost people, they have the EMF readers when they go to these houses. They go there and they, the EMFs are off the charts. They're just literally off the, off the charts. That means there's electromagnetic frequency literally flowing through the air at a very high level. Um, and sometimes the levels that they pick up are levels that are almost could shock you if you were, if it were able to be directed directly at you mm -hmm. in these levels. And, um, I know that the situation, one of the situations I had, David, and this was, this was, uh, something that, like I said, I've talked about it before, so I'm not scared to say anything about it, but if I were, if I didn't know better, if I hadn't read the Bible and seen what was going on in the Bible, seen the entities that are described in the Bible, I would have thought that I was being abducted by an alien. This is the truth because what happened to me was I was laying in my bed. I felt a zap of electricity hit the back of my head and just completely almost knock me out, almost kill me. It felt like I felt like my body was leaving and then it slammed back into me. And, and, and then this whole scenario happened where I encountered these beings that were trying to take me off and i remember the only thing that i could think of was you know the say say the name jesus the name of all names say say his name say say jesus I, I was like i was saying all the names i was saying jesus yeshua saying all these things and they said come with us and i said no i'm not coming with you and then they disappeared right this is this is the the situation that i had uh that is completely crazy sounding to people who have never had an experience like this, but this is the situations I have. And in situations where actually David's been there before, um, when we were doing a conference, a girl was growling and screaming on the ground, rubbing her face in the ground. And she was possessed to a point to where she was not able to control herself. But in the air, I could feel static electricity. I could feel the sick feeling in my stomach when I approached her, uh, the things that you don't normally feel, unless there's something like electricity in the air or some kind of low humming or supernatural occurrence, which I believe the electricity in the air, the low humming, all of that stuff is the supernatural occurrence. I believe that we've been able to harness it to use it for energy, but I believe this is literally a supernatural effect. David, have you ever had anything like that happen to you when you've dealt in these situations? You've been doing this for a long time, and I know that you've come across this. We have many times in many of these situations, and the the effect um and you and you know the thing that i think these the reports of these type of experiences are getting more and more common and what happens to a person the situation you describe thousands of people have described the same situation yeah and what happens when the person isn't a believer and they don't tell them to go away and refuse to go with them uh, it doesn't end well for them yeah. and they get deeply and it does it's not a ufo or an alien abduction but it is certainly a archon abduction we could call it and these things of the vibrations and the hums and when this technology and it's just like a full moon during a full moon the old expression lunatic come from the behavior of people that were afflicted, they would act up more during yeah. a full moon. So yeah. they would use the term lunatic. Yeah. And the same thing, and you know, some people have more, pro we all got problems and some people are more susceptible in areas than others. Yeah. And when this type of technology is used, this low EMF uh, frequencies, uh, harp, there's just multiple options they have there this will really affect certain people and cause them to go postal 
for right. lack of a better word. We've seen these scenarios, and we are we are set up in a situation to where this technology could be released in an area, and you could have zombie apocalypse. Yeah. You know, this is becoming a technological reality. Yeah. And we've seen this over and over again of people that are being uh, affected by the 5G and, and these technologies. And a lot of times we don't even know where it's coming from, but yeah. we know it's here. Yeah. We can feel the effects of it. You can feel, uh, I, I've even had like um, a metallic taste in my mouth yeah. at times during a time where you just feel a overwhelming, the satanic presence. Yeah. And it, it can get to be overwhelming. Yeah, no, it's it's so true, man. It's it is overwhelming. It's weird. It's a real sick sick feeling that um, a lot of people describe. And I and I know that for those of you that have never experienced anything like this, you're probably thinking, man, these guys are nuts. But this is a real feeling. This is something that you can't get by when dealing with this. I know that um, in in the chat, Dan Bodondi was actually used to be a ghost hunter before he became a believer, and and I'm sure he could back up what I'm telling you. And you can, in fact, you could go. And just uh, for yourself, if you're ever in, in a place where you feel that there is supernatural uh, affliction going on, check it yourself. You'll see that it's there. It's in the air. And it's um, and it can do this. Now, scientists have really studied the effects of electricity on the brain. Um, for I guess, for example, this part of the brain here that you guys see is that agular gyrus and if you stimulate this part of the brain it actually gives you the effect that somebody is walking behind you mirroring your steps um this is really interesting when when you talk about this and of course they've mapped many parts of the brain uh one thing that i want to show you guys um that i think that you guys will want to see some of you may have seen this before but this happened uh in our in our history this is the I guess the history of the study of our brain. This is a very short video, but um, Wilder Graves Pinfield, he was a neurosurgeon, and he greatly expanded the world of brain surgery. He mapped the areas of the brain, um, such as what is, we call the cortical humunculus, and you'll learn a little bit about it in this video. So I'm going to play this video. Expected. Uh finding was to discover that an elect a mild electrical current applied to the surface of the brain causes a patient to have a memory from his own past sometimes one specific recollection of an experience so that when we touch one area with a an electrode carrying a gentle electrical current action may be started in a part of the mechanism of the brain and so we can judge what area is involved. It was 11 years ago that you were here and you had had, uh, as a little girl, around seven, an illness that left its mark. Then we, you remember, we studied you with the x-ray, with electrograms, and then the saw the pattern of your attack, and there was only one place it could be, and that's right here in your right temporal region. And so we opened it up there, didn't we? Yes. Under local anesthesia. Do you remember the pain? There was no pain. When we stimulated at three, you had a tingling in your thumb. You've probably forgotten now. When we stimulated 11, you opened your mouth and made a sound like, ah, until I pulled away the electrode and then you stopped. I don't even know if you knew why you were doing it. Down here, which is just a little margin here in the temporal lobe, it changed your hearing so that you found it difficult to hear. And then underneath this, down into the crack there, we stimulated, and to my astonishment, you said, I hear music. Then I did nothing and repeated it without warning you a little while later. And you said, I hear that music again. Tell us what you heard. Well, I heard what sounded like an orchestra playing. And I asked the nurse where it was coming from. And she said, what music? And I said, 
throw at music, and then it stopped. And and then I stimulated it again, you remember, and asked you about it, and you hummed it. Will you hum it now? You remember it? Yes. Go ahead. Da, 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 da. So that's pretty interesting if you ask me. Now, this is something that they've perfected and probably gone huge on. This is Neuralink's technologies works off the back of this. All of these different technologies that we see work off the back. Now, any technology that we hear about is coming out for consumers, I believe, has at least been used by for 10 to 20 years by groups who have the power to hide things and use them, such as intelligence organizations, secret military organizations, etc., have these abilities and have been using these abilities for a long time. Now, it doesn't matter if people have been able to use these abilities. We know that the prince of the power of the air can use these abilities without technology and has been doing it for a long time. Now, he can't use it maybe perfectly. Uh, there's times when you see a demon-possessed person that is literally jolting around, can't control their senses, screaming, you know, slamming on their face, doing things that are just completely something that you would never do to yourself unless you really just wanted to hurt yourself in a bad way. They do these things, these the almost seizure-like things. And now I think this kind of explains the idea that, you know, there may be an entity who walked in them that's having trouble controlling the car. He's having trouble driving, he's, you know, sending electricity to these parts and that parts. And this is when this manifestation takes place that causes a reaction. And I believe a lot of the times the manifestations that take place only take place like this in the because they feel the power of God around agitating them. Now, usually uh, a lot of people who are demon possessed, sometimes they'll never even spout off like they're possessed until somebody shows up that they can sense the Holy Spirit in. This is a common occurrence, and this causes this reaction. Um, I, I think that the impulsive reactions, the the ability that they have to actually take control of a human, this is interesting, too, because in, in the Bible— when Jesus describes an ailment, he describes a lame, the spirit of you know being lame, the spirit of being dumb, the spirit of this guy who was falling down, maybe having seizures his whole life. He says, he, he tells, commands the spirit inside of them to leave. Now, a lot of these ailments, if, if you can control someone's arm, their leg, their feeling, their mouth, their tongue, their ability through an electrical impulse in the brain, why couldn't these things be literally spiritual entities that are disturbing a part of the brain that causes people to be able to behave the way that they're supposed to behave? Now, it doesn't mean that they're fully demon-possessed, like there's this demon in them trying to act through them, but it means that there could be literally a spiritual attack on that person's brain causing electrical malfunctions to keep that person from being able to move forward in the way that they're supposed to move forward. Uh, David, what do you think about that statement? I know it's a controversial statement for me to say it, and I'm and I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I'd like to hear what you think. Well, I, I think what really impresses me is what we should think about is that Mr. Penfield's research is over 60 years old. Yes. And at that time, he could literally play that lady's brain like a piano. Well, yeah. He could touch the places just like you would the keys on a piano and get a... Uh, a response, and there was a fellow, a British scientist by the name of John Eccles, and he won a Nobel Prize for brain research, and he wrote a book called The Ghost in the Machine. And basically what he proved by through studying electricity and the way it interacts with the human brain, he says the brain was like a organ, and there was something acting upon it from an outside source, and that's why he said the ghost in the machine, that there was something coming in that was electrical electrical that was operating the machine. Now, people, when they get into things like occult meditation, Eastern meditation, and you make your mind passive, yeah. you surrender the control of your brain to a spirit, yeah. an entity, and literally, just like Mr. Penfield was touching it and making it do i'll touch this her mouth or come open yeah. literally a spirit comes in and is playing your brain like a piano yeah. and you see like you described all kinds of crazy gyrations and whatever that spirit wants them to do yeah it's it's amazing really when you think about it and and almost um 
makes you rethink a lot of what you know about behaviors. Uh, a lot of times, you know, that the behaviors when I'm having a time where I'm completely having anxiety, which doesn't happen very often, but there are times when I just feel this strong anxiety and I think, what is going on here? Why am I feeling this anxiety? What is, what is causing this? What is causing, um, all of these different malfunctions going on? And sometimes you just know that it is spiritual warfare. You can feel it. You know, I went through a spell of a few weeks where, you know, in the last few weeks I've lost, uh, my uncle died, right? Unexpectedly died. I had, uh, animals die. I've had all these crazy things happen to me and all of these different things that happened to me in a short, short amount of time. And I could feel that there was a spiritual attack on my life. I could feel that that was happening. And it's amazing to think that through the use of the ability to use electricity in our brain just can cause the thoughts, the thoughts that we may not want to think about, the things that we shouldn't think about can be, um, put into our head and, you know, one of the, I want to read this real quick because this is something that um, Freemasons, and of course, I don't know that every Freemasons believe this, but one of the 33rd degree Freemasons, one of the top guys in Freemasonry, the Manly P. Hall, uh, in the Lost Keys of Freemasonry, he wrote this, and this is a condensed version of his um, quote here, but it says, when the Mason learns that the key is the proper application of the dynamo of living power, he has learned the mystery of his craft. The seething energies of Lucifer are in his hand. Now, in this, in the actual full quote, he talks about learn the secret of the warrior on the block. They learn to be the warrior on the block. And you have these seething energies of Lucifer ready to be used at your hands. And as in the last show that, that uh, not the last, the week before last, we talked a little bit about the mark of the beast. We talked about the ability to be able to harness this power in order to give life to um, the image of the beast, as it says in Revelation, that the that there will be power given to this beast to give image uh, life to an image. You'll be able to literally give life to an image. And I think what Tesla, one of the things Tesla was doing, and people like him, have been prophets of this. They've been people of this um, order that have, and maybe not even an order they knew about, but just of an order that this thing has been trying to reach out to humanity and get humanity to take its technology so that it can affect humanity on a much larger scale than it is right now. Now, demons can go and they can affect people. They can cause problems in your life. They can do a lot of different things, but they can't control everything, right? They can't do it all. But once they have the technology to where they're literally making the policy, where they are the ones who are able to manage every. Thing, every thought, everything that mankind does, once they're able to put the put the mark of the beast on people to be able to analyze their even their thoughts, their ideas, to be able to know everything, then they will claim this entity, this I believe this entity, this archon who is the prince and the power of the air, will claim his spot and try to pretend like he is the most high God. Uh, in the Bible, Jesus said this. He said, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. Now, like the other verse we read, I'm going to take that seriously. I'm going to say that he literally beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. I believe that that's possible. And this is what happens when you take the Bible literally. You start seeing things that does that are start to make sense once you really look at them through a serious lens. And, you know, for thousands of years, for literally thousands of years, we've had puppets who have been the agenda makers for our country. Now, the with darkness, the growing of dark people, the growing of people who are corrupted and who are willing to take in partake in sin and lewdness and be able to give be given to a reprobate mind, these people, this ability that they've given themselves is the ability to uh, by corrupting people, by their agenda to corrupt people, have given themselves the ability to act out in more people. You know, there was a time, believe it or not, where evil was kind of pushed down, kept in the dark. People didn't really talk about it. They didn't really show it. Um, now the evil has been put in the forefront. The lights have been turned on. The evil are there, and they're dancing. They're dancing in your face, laughing in your face, saying, this is what we do. This is who we are. We're going to keep doing it. And they can only do that because there's so many people who have been corrupted. Um, they can't do it when there's only a few people corrupted. The good people rise up, but there's so many people that have been corrupted by the world, by the things of this world, by all of the the fancy things that have made us comfortable here where we stand. Now, this is a this is a video here 
uh, that I want to have you guys listen to. We're only going to watch part of the video, but this is the creator of D-Wave. Uh, notice the symbol there on Tech Vancouver, pretty interesting. But this is the D-Wave guy. This is um, somebody that, um, when it comes to this stuff, this guy wrote the book on it. So we're going to listen to what he has to say. And he addresses Elon Musk's idea, too, about uh, the demon, you know, summoning the demons. These things that we're building are not going to be people. They might be really smart, they might be really good at all sorts of different things, but they're not going to be like us. They're going to be aliens. And they're going to be, I'm sorry to say, way smarter than every single person in this room, in ways that we can't even comprehend. So this, of course, triggers a lot of alarm. One of the guys who talks about this is Elon, who uh, says things like this. Like, when you do this, beware. Because you think, just like the guy in the stories, that when you do this, you're going to put that, that, that little guy in a pentagram, and you're going to have your holy water out, and you're going to wave it at the thing, and by God, it's going to do exactly what you say, and not one thing more, but it never works out that way. So uh, this, is an, this is an attitude that some are having, this emerging alarmism about the way this is going to go. But this, these words, demons, doesn't capture the essence of what's happening here. Uh, I don't know if any of you are uh, turn-of-the-century weird fiction fans, but there's this guy named H.P. Lovecraft, who's a very famous American weird fiction author. And he exposed a, a, a view which is called cosmicism. And the essence of cosmicism is cosmic indifference. So he, what he was saying is basically, yes, there are these massively intelligent entities out there, but they're not good, they're not evil. They just don't give a shit about you even in the slightest. The same way that you don't care about an ant is the same way they're not going to care about you. And these things that we're summoning into the world now are not demons, they're not evil, but they're more like the Lovecraftian great old ones. There are entities that are not necessarily going to be aligned with what we want. So this... We're going to stop it there because he goes on for a long time in this video. But what he's describing here is, you know, these entities that are going to come, they're going to be smarter than humans, and they're going to have the ability to uh, do some things that we are probably not going to be very happy about. This is Gordy Rose. Uh, he does, there's a whole lecture. He did this lecture years ago. He's continuing to do lectures because they're continuing to try to build on to um, um, quantum computers. Now, Google's got their own quantum computer. A lot of people have their quantum computer now. The quantum computer is such an interesting thing. It's something that is able to reach out and pull information and being able to bounce information and almost in, in a practical way, once, it, once it's ever, ever practical to regular consumers, almost tell the future because it can create every scenario that could possibly happen, bounce it off and bring you back something. So we have this interesting thing that's happening here. Now, with all this being said, we know that we are Transit in a very, very scary time. The, this is a time that all people almost are able to be manipulated in some way, shape, and form. If we don't have the electricity manipulating people's minds, we have the propaganda manipulating people's minds. We have the regular sin nature that we all have manipulating the minds. We have people who are supposed to be educating us, manipulate, manipulating our minds. We have the people who entertain us all working together in an agenda that is working through the prince who is coming in to destroy the world. They're all working together because they don't know any better. They're puppets. They are literally acting this way. Now, what does the Bible say? This is interesting. This verse that we read where Jesus talks about Satan falling from heaven, he says something after that, and I think there's a reason he says it after this, and we're going to read it right now. It says, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. All the power of the enemy, wow. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in, the rejo in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Now this verse right here is not only edifying, it's empowering, and it gives faith. It says that nothing of the power of the enemy, which the power of the air, the power can hurt you with 
the blessing of the Most High God. He gives this to his disciples. He goes forth. He tells us to have faith that we can move mountains. He says that if we do the things that he asks us and commands that will be blessed, the entire scripture tells us what we must do in order for us to seek the benefits of being a child of God, to understand what it means to be forgiven and have our spirit quickened to where we are no longer susceptible to being abused, used, and controlled by the spirit of darkness, by the great archon who controls the air. We no longer have this problem anymore. And I know that a lot of you think, well, I have problems going on, but I'm asking you this. Have you ever took that control that you're supposed to have, that God gave us this ability to be able to have the spirit subject to us have you taken that and used it have you used that authority have you said be gone in the name of yeshua have you said be gone in the name of jesus leave in the name of jesus have you said the words and commanded as though you are having the authority to command things in the name of the most high god this is something that we really need to understand in our lives folks because the time is not here to fear the time is to continue i try to explain to my children how life works and it's hard because children don't understand all of the things that we understand but they do understand some things because they they have certain ways they learn they have certain things they like to do for entertainment as children and not only was this a great way to explain it to my children but i was talking to my wife last night and she said what you said there i need to write down you need to write it down you need to say it and i don't know exactly what i said or how i said it but i can tell you the gist of what i'm what we're saying here life that we are we are either Given the ability to have life, God's formulated us, he foreknew us, he put us in this world, he put us here. And I believe that we are here for a reason. We're here to learn something. We're here to do something. We're here because God wanted us here to be here. Now, the way this world is designed by the spirit of the air to keep us in our tracks is designed in a way to keep us scared, from continuing on to go to the next level, to keep us over and over again failing to a point to where we get discouraged, to keep us to a point to where we get satisfied maybe even since some of the levels to a point to where we're not willing to go any further because we're scared of what might happen now i told my children i was like have you ever been on a video game level to where you just can't beat that level there's something that happens every time it beats you it beats you and you just give up he's then my son was like yeah it happens he's like usually what i do is i'll go back and maybe i'll find something to help me beat that level i said well this is exactly how life is supposed to be life is supposed to be you continue on and you keep going and you push and you persevere and you go through the different levels and if you get stuck on something you keep trying right or some or you go back and you understand what did I do wrong? You look through the word, you look through the, the teachings that have been passed down of wisdom and you see what did I do wrong and you take that with you and you go forth and you beat that level. Every level you go through, and have you heard the saying, a bigger level, a bigger devil, you're going to face things that are going to push you and the things that are going to scare you and things, enemies that are going to come after you with everything that they have. But because of the Spirit of God, because we have the ability to be called the children of God, we actually have the ability to tread on serpents and have nothing by any means harm us. And so we need to take that power and move forward with that and not be scared. We need to keep going all the way. Even if this world takes us out, remember this, in a video game, guess what? You have the power to come back. We're going to come back, and we're going to come back, and we're going to win the next time around. So don't be scared to die. Death is just a, just a stage that we all have to go through. Every single one of us is going to go through. We need to walk in the power, understand that the prince of the, prince of the air, his, his people that are subject to him are also subject to us, and we have the power to command them in the name of Jesus. And so with that being said, guys, I want you to have no fear. That's the conclusion that I have tonight, David. Do you have anything you would like to add for the people tonight? Well, what you say reminds me of what Jessie Penn Lewis wrote. She wrote The War of the Saints from her involvement with Evan Roberts in the Welsh Revival. And she wrote that the biggest cause of believers being overtaken by dark powers was passivity. Yes. They become passive. They, they do not pray and read their word and engage the holy spirit in their life and it when we're doing that we're not going to be taken over it's that simple just like you say living a, a life of humble obedience and communion with the lord and we're going to be fine we don't need to fear because there's there's a great text in uh the book of colossians chapter 2 uh 
beginning in verse 14, it says, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. He made a clown show of them. He, he didn't just defeat them. Yeah. Uh, he humiliated them. And in Christ and in the cross and in that relationship of abiding in him, there's victory over all the powers of hell. Amen. And for those of you that stuck around with us, I want to share something with you guys that only you guys are going to hear. Now, the people in our fellowship group have already heard it. But this is for you guys. Now, we are doing a meet and greet in Nashville, and it is coming up very soon. The link is in the description. I can't tell you the exact date on my mind. David, do you remember the date? It's the 11th. I the 11th. The yeah. 11th. Yes. April 11th on a Tuesday. On a Tuesday, I think at 6 p.m., and we're meeting at Nashville at the Golden Corral. Believe it or not, this is the only place we could find that was able to house us on a, on a Tuesday, right? There was, there was a lot of places, but this is the place we're going to meet. I set the number for 50 before it's already sold out, so I've moved it up to 300. We're going to just try to pack the place out. All of us come there, hang out together in Nashville for a good time. Uh, David's going to be there. I'm going to be there. John's going to be there. Patricia's going to be there. Dan Bedoni's going to be there. I think Brian's going to be there. I think Joshua Watts is going to be there. Like A lot of us are going to be there. We're going to have fun. Lisa is going to be there. I think a lot of us are going to be there. And we're going to have fun. And you you don't only get to meet us, which is not that great of a privilege. I know some of you guys might think it is, but it's not that great. But you also get to meet other people in your area that are similar to you that you guys can talk with. This is an amazing thing. This is something that, you know, loneliness is a real issue when it comes to knowing the truth. The more you know, the lonelier you get because a lot of people just don't know it. And you, you can see that and it makes it hard to converse with those people. Well, meet, a, meet up with us, hang out with us. Link's in the description. It's free to register. Come there, hang out, get some food. And we will have a good time. And I, I just want to say that I'm super thankful for every single one of you that subscribe to this channel and our other channels that really support what we do and share this stuff out. I mean, millions of people are being reached every month. It's pretty amazing. Between social media, YouTube, and Rumble, millions of people are hearing the truth in some way, shape, or form. And they're getting exposed to interesting things that are in this word because ultimately it boils down to having the spirit of god and being able to read the word and to really be interested in it. a lot of people aren't interested in it but you guys are and we're thankful for you guys and so i just want to say from the bottom of my heart thank you david you want to end us out yeah and people will need to pre-register to be able to get a seat there to make sure well, they can get in or uh so the reason we do the pre-registration so they really don't have to pre-register to get a seat in there we do that so that we can have a list of the people that showed up that way that they can reconnect with each other so we'll okay. put that list All there right. very good that way people have emails and they're able to say okay who, who are you let me connect with you we've got it here on paper um but yeah you don't actually have to register to go and go to golden corral that i know of um so that very good yeah very good all right well i um i really enjoyed the broadcast tonight of course i would wouldn't i yeah. <laughs> but you know it, it makes me think of mr oppenheimer oppenheimer and his copy of the vedas he was doing that not because he was trying to do something new but he was wanting to get back to something old yeah. in the um the Vedas, it talks about the Vamanas, the flying machines, and even atomic explosions. And uh, there, there was a good, there's a reason for that. But I'm very thankful for the broadcast tonight. As always, I'm very thankful for all of you that listened and support uh, the Midnight Ride. Uh, we're excited about the event in Nashville. It's going to be busy pop. Going to put bubbles in your soda. There's no doubt about it. And what we're going to do... We're going to put a little fizz in the in the YouTube with the Pounder's Pound. That's right. Yeah, we're I forgot going to do about the, the Pounder's Pound. Pound. Yeah, we're going to put a little fizz in the like button here. <laughs> Let's <laughs> so, fizz it up. So on the count of three, we're going to make it frosty on that like button. So get ready. One, One two, two, three. three. Boom. Boom, man. I felt that like button. Thank you guys so much for doing that. Subscribe if you liked what you heard. And we will be back to do this again very soon. David Ennis out. With great thanks and all humility unto you and the Father for allowing us once again to bring another episode of the Midnight Ride. A big thanks to all of you. And with that, 
Until next Saturday night, 10 p.m. Central. High five and good night, everybody, from the Midnight Ride. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up, rise up, rise up.